Today we're going to torture test the uh, Pratt 7,000 pound capacity trailer. So right now we've got a 400 pound uh, pallet dolly. We've got a 6,000 pound safe right on the axles. And we've got a 2,000 pound safe on the, uh, just kind of forward of the axle. So the Jeep is not rated for this much weight obviously. It's not quite lifted off the ground. But uh, the hydraulics were able to lift it, which is kind of nice. I do have a bag of sand there just in case I get into some trouble. If you look at the uh, ratings of this thing, it's uh, good for 9,500 pounds all in. And so that makes it weighs about uh, 2,500 pound for the trailer because it's good for 7,000 pounds cargo. I don't like the pindle hitch on it. It's pretty noisy, but then again, this pintle is pretty big for the uh, hook that they gave me. I did find that uh, this will kill your battery if you leave it connected uh, to your vehicle overnight. Normally, the Jeep isolates itself from a load, so I'm kind of surprised uh, that it did that. I had to boost it in the morning. It's got electric brakes on both axles. It's got the tearaway gadget on there. This uh, is a bit of a, a weak point here trying to lift up the trailer. They had to use a forklift to uh, put this on my Jeep because the suspension on the Jeep sags a fair amount. Um, it only really has chain pockets on it, so I had to get a couple chains or uh, straps with chain attachments on them. The uh, deck is pretty sturdy. I was able to drive up onto it with the forklift and it was pretty much just on the ground, right? So it's not going to move too much. It'll fit just barely into a, a vehicle door. I did find that there's a bit of a, a bow in the beaver tail. So when it lays down, you can't push anything on, like anything really heavy on with the pallet jack. Or not this one anyway, because it's got pretty low clearance. It uh, only lifts things off the ground about a, an eighth of an inch, depending on how heavy you're trying to move. Other than that, it's a pretty slick system. I guess we can uh, try the hydraulics here before I hit the road. So you have to some kind of hydraulic control to lock out the uh, hydraulics. Then there's an up and a down. Pretty much all the way down now. It's got a pretty stiff suspension, if it has any at all. Nice loud bird. 400 birds. What's going on over there? Eh, might be twisting a little bit. I'd say it was abused by somebody else other than myself. So you can see the beaver tail. It lays down, but it you need like a steel plate if you want to roll anything onto it. I guess uh, we are ready to roll. It's a beautiful day in June, as you can see. Hopefully that truck is not in my way to get out. To wiggle my way out of here. It's a pretty sterile alley. So uh, I guess we will get to the destination. I gotta do a little bit more rigging here, I think, before I leave. Yeah, these straps come with these little thumbs to hold the uh, excess strap on but that's not going to work for when you're driving but it's good to keep it under control just when you're getting organized so i'll get this uh tidied up that's my egress for my load here this thing's only rated for what wow, it's not a lot i think three thousand pounds or something 
3,300 pounds, but it'll lift six. So that's interesting. You wouldn't want to <laughs> be careful when you're doing it. It's very wobbly, so you have to have like the safe has uh, little wood blocks here to stop it from rolling over. You couldn't lift that without those. That would be very dangerous. Then uh, the forklift is uh, on deck next if everything works out. It's 8,000 pounds without the attachments. So it's got a side shift and the forks on it. And uh, it's probably too long for that trailer with the forks on, so it'll have to come off. But So like 8,500 pounds, it'll be a bit lighter load, although it looks like it's heavier. But uh, So that'll be going next, depending on how things uh, turn out. So let's uh, get moving on. All right, so we're just gonna pull out onto the roadway here. So we're only going a couple of miles and we're only going uh, 15 miles an hour maybe. We're not gonna go very fast. We don't wanna break this thing. We're uh, got four wheel drive just in, uh, oh, it's regular gear. There's some car coming out here. All right, so we'll have to figure out what they're doing and then uh, check the load and then get moving. I already got on the road. Definitely need the electric brakes. The trailer is pushing through the uh, vehicle brakes right now. So, see if I can get them figured out. That's yeah, pretty good, just a touch more. I noticed that this thing will easily lock up the brakes when it's empty. All right, I think we're good to go. Someone almost got on top of my trailer to walk across it. This one lady get killed. Make sure we can stop for this intersection. Definitely not something you want to take on the highway, especially a day like today. Yeah, the car coming. These trees are kind of annoying for viewing. Hey, another guy with the trailer. So we're gonna go for it. I notice that the trailer, when it's empty, when you get going at not even a very fast speed, it starts oscillating and kind of rolling like the tires are like eggs or something. Oh, just construction. Oh, we're getting beat up pretty good. I think that's it, 15 miles an hour. All right, we're not going very far, so I'll just uh, let the camera run, I guess. Fast forward if you want. When you got a load like this, the most important thing to do is plan ahead. You're not stopping suddenly. Ugh, we're definitely riding on the bump stops. We're getting beat up pretty hard. Nothing's broken. Turn up a bit too much for the snow. Turn that down.
made about a third of the destination. I think I'm gonna tire off the camera and focus on driving here. All right, we made it without any trouble. The driveway is a bit of an incline, not a very steep one. Kind of equals out the uh, trailer. So I guess we'll see if we can get the uh, big safe off of here. If this thing starts to run away, it's just going to go and destroy whatever it destroys. Nothing I can do about it. Next one is going to be easy to get off, so uh, I'll get things organized here and I guess we'll go back for the uh, forklift if the weather behaves. Alright, we got the forklift loaded on. It was kind of tricky. When you uh, lift up on the trailer, it gets some like positive tongue weight there. It starts to lift up the vehicle. But after a bit of fooling around, I got the load in a good position. Put the chain with the pockets there. Uh, turn out or not, but I just have a chain on each uh, front corner here. So I got to get out of here. It looks like my alternator is going to give up in the Jeep. And it'd be a real problem if I uh, break down with this load here. So uh, thanks for watching. Well, we somehow made it back. And the forklift fits in by about a quarter of an inch through the doorway. So we're good there. Disconnected the trailer for the night. Got the Jeep on charge. The battery was so dead that the radio turned off. All the service four wheel drive came on and got stuck in like low gear. After driving for a few minutes in low gear, I guess the alternator made enough uh, voltage to uh, get things working again and started to shift. But it was uh, not looking good. So uh, a bit of an adventure. So the trailer is pretty tough. It'll do uh, 9,000 pounds, even though it's a 7,000 pound trailer, without doing any damage to it if you're driving around slow. So hopefully you found this interesting or informative, so thank you for watching.